You've probably had team members come to you and say, why are we doing this? And that can be a really good question. Oftentimes when people want to know why, they, they want to understand what's going on in the situation. And as leaders, a lot of times we've been taught to, you want to explain the why. What we're going to talk about today is some of the situations where, yes, you want to stop and explain the why, and also where at times you don't want to stop and explain the why, where you, you really want to do something different. So let's jump right in. When I was in the military, we used something called a five paragraph operations order. And it was a, uh, it was a very detailed way to create a mission. And there were the five big components of it. And the first one was what's going on? What's the situation? What kind of intelligence do we have? Even things like what's the weather or what's the terrain like? Well, paragraph two is very short. It's the actual operation direction, directive itself. And it's very militaristic sounding and it's one giant sentence. And it usually is something really awkward sounding like on or about uh, 0200 on 20 October uh, 2024, Bravo Company 37 Infantry will attack such and such bridge at the intersection of this river and, and this road in order to, or, uh, to, to destroy the bridge, period. So it's, it's very, you're, this group is going to do this thing at this place at this time. What's actually the most important part of the entire five paragraph operations order is exactly what comes next. So in the very next paragraph, which is the operations paragraph where we get into all the details about how's this gonna work, all kinds of, of great information there, the most important thing is what's called commander's intent. And that's paragraph 3A. So what's important is when we're wanting to explain, when we choose to explain the why we're doing something, one of the most important things you can give to your team member is, what's my intent? The reason intent is so valuable is because, let's use that example where Bravo 37 Infantry is going to destroy such and such bridge. Great, that's what we're gonna do. When I know the why behind it, when I know the intent, if the commander says, look, you're gonna destroy that bridge so you can stop this resupply convoy from getting to the enemy. Let's just say that. Okay, wonderful. If I'm, the, if I'm the senior person on that mission and we get to that bridge and we realize, oh my gosh, we're not gonna be able to do this for whatever set of reasons. What I get to do is say, okay, how else can I meet this intent? And it might be, oh, I, I destroy a different bridge, or maybe I create a road, uh, some obstacles across the road, or maybe I go and capture that convoy itself. So there's a lot of other things I get to do when I understand the intent. So here's what's important. If you want to give people latitude in how they execute a mission, it can be very important to explain to them, why are we doing this? What is the intent? And I encourage you to say out loud, hey, I'm not going to explain this every time. And for this particular task or this particular um, assignment I've got for you, I'm really going to stop and explain what's happening because when you get to the point where you're doing this, you may realize that the original plan you had or what you and I talked about, that's not going to work. And so I want you to have the latitude to come up with, with your own ideas. Now, you may put some parameters around this. So you may say, hey, these kinds of things are okay. So if you wanna shift this way or that way or add this person or delay the time by this much, you're gonna know what that is. You may say, hey, these kinds of parameters, those are okay. You go ahead and still run with it. If you're finding that you're not able to come up with a plan that work within these parameters, well, then you come back and let's talk about it and we can come up with another plan or we can start to escalate and figure out what to do. So now again, the intent though is to give people that latitude, give them the ability to think creatively, to, to use their judgment to grow and you're doing this very, very deliberately. Now here's what's important. There are gonna be times, and you probably know this already, you probably experienced this, where you realize, gosh, we're, we're in a real time crunch, crunch here. Uh, we don't have, I don't wanna take the time to go through all of this. Or you may say, gosh, what I want this person to do is pretty specific, it's pretty important, and it's really urgent, so it's just important that they execute. 
So there are going to be times where you don't give the why, where you don't provide a lot of reasoning. And that may be where, again, time is tight, where there's very, very specific parameters that you recognize are non-negotiable. And you just, you just can tell somebody, hey, for this thing, I'm not going to go into details. Please just go ahead and execute this plan. Just go ahead and knock this out and come on back when that's done. So what's key here is it does make sense to give the why sometimes. It also makes sense to not give the why sometimes. And here's what's critical is for you to be sure that you're saying this out loud. Because what you're going to realize in your head is with your experience, you're very quickly able to figure out which one of these situations you're in. Your team members may not see it that way. They may not understand it because they don't have your experience. They don't know everything about the, the bigger set of requirements or the bigger uh, tasks that you're working towards. So they may not figure this out. So the, the takeaway from this is be deliberate about when you're going to say, yes, I'm going to explain the why and be deliberate about when you're not going to. If you default to one or the other too much, you can have hidden costs. The costs may be people don't take the latitude, they don't have the ability to, or they don't think they have the ability to, to, to think creatively because they don't understand enough, or you haven't explicitly told them, hey, you're gonna have some latitude, buddy, so go ahead and use that if you run into a problem. Or you may have people on the other side who, if you consistently don't give them any information, and there could be good reasons for that. Just know that you're going to probably get minimally viable products. And what I mean by that is if you tell somebody to go do X and they can go do X, that's probably all they're going to do. So it's going to be up to you to really define carefully what's happening over here and what you want somebody to do. So play with this. Again, there's a lot of variables in this. You're gonna know what makes sense for you and your business in this particular task. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. We've got a heck of a lot more at wingspanperformance.com. You can go to our blogs page. You can also sign up right on YouTube and hit the notify button and you'll get uh, a, a note about any of our new videos that come out. If you sign up on the wingspanperformance.com website. You can also, at the very bottom of the first page, get our weekly newsletter where you'll not only get videos like this, you'll also get all of our written blogs. Currently, we have well over a hundred of those, so I encourage you to, to go and check those out on the site, and you'll probably find lots of other things that you'll like. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.